go through application of the leads to get a 12 lead first, then we're going to do a 15 lead EKG, right? Uh, in terms of your 12 lead EKG, the format is the same, right? So when it prints out, it doesn't matter if you're using Zoll, Life by 12, right? Or MRX, you have these grid lines, right? Let's see if you guys can tell me. In, in this corner, the, the first lead, what is the first lead? One. One, good. What's the next one? Two. Two. Next? Three. Right, B4. Yep. B5. B6. Good. So, these are, notice how they say augmented voltage, right? Augmented voltage, right? Augmented voltage left, augmented voltage foot. That means the following. When you're doing a rhythm strip, a three lead strip, for example, I could put leads anywhere. I could put it on his torso, I could put it on his limbs. Doesn't matter. I'm getting like my regular rhythm. Doesn't matter, right? But the moment I do a 12 lead, if I leave those limb leads on his torso, it's gonna over amplify because they are augmented voltage. So you have a non-diagnostic 12 lead if you leave the limb leads on the torso. Yeah. yeah? So it becomes no longer diagnostic, right? If you're, on, if you're on, a, on a rotation and the paramedics there decide to do it, right, do not argue with them. Because they're the ones on the ambulance, they decide to do it, let them do it the way they want to do it. But once you become paramedics, you're going to do it the right way, right? So let's say you just needed a, a three-lead strip, right? Uh, you can put them anywhere. But the moment you decide to do a 12 lead, make sure you move them off the torso. So it has to be below the shoulder and below the guinal ligament, right? So anywhere on the leg. Uh, below the shoulder make sense right so this is why we do this right so what you're going to do is you notice how i placed them on the stretcher right do not do 12 leads for your patients if uh, they are on your bench in the ambulance or they're somewhere on the chair uncomfortable in the house you're going to get uh they're going to be in pain you're not going to get a good tracing and they may be moving you may get artifact i do not want artifact i want a clean uh 12 lead. make sense so I make him comfortable in the ambulance. I'll turn on the heat, put a pillow for him, right? You know, so he's comfortable. He's sitting. I'll take alcohol to prep his skin. Usually, you'll see some electrodes, which these are not. If you open them up on certain places when you do rotations, they'll have like abrasion pad. That abrasion pad, like it's blue. It's there to abrade the skin, right? Why do you need to abrade the skin? It's good skin prep will give you better tracing. You're not going to get all this interference, all this artifact. Make sense? So then the, the next thing you're going to do is, so he may have chest pain, he may have, right, he may have difficulty breathing. So I'm not telling you lay him down flat, right? Make him comfortable, you know, position of comfort. This might be semi follows may be a good position. Uh, put a pillow, say, sir, we're going to take a, a look at your heart. We're going to do a cardiogram, right? Is it okay? You can lift up your shirt for me so I, that I can place the leads, all right? So have them do it. I would do it, if, I would do it in the back of the ambulance. <laughs> <laughs> all right guys all right. So, so so look this is this is this is this is your this is your limb leads right this is your precordial leads right one one thing that you don't want to do one thing that you don't want to do is this uh so like, I'm, I'm just gonna lift up just for a second what you don't want to do when you're applying the leads is first apply the leads and then do this <laughs> Right? It's painful for the patient, right? So don't please don't do that. That's more painful. <laughs> I, I tried to put where there's no hair. Right? So what you want to do is, right, so you explain that you're going to do a cardiogram. And what I like to do is first I would uh, put my limb leads on, on the uh, life pack. The ground wire is going to be on the limb leads. On these, the ground wire is not on these. It's on the... Uh, precordial leads. So I'm going to show you a method to remember this so that you're, you come to the bedside, you have an unstable patient, you, and you're like, right arm, uh, right? I'm not sure. So we're going to go color-coded, right? The way I remember is if I'm looking at the patient, salt, pepper, ketchup, relish. Salt is what color? White, White pepper, Black. Black. Black, ketchup, red, Red. relish. Green. Do you have a question? Uh, the way I remembered it was no overcraft or smoke on the top. Perfect. It, whatever mnemonic you remember that works for you is fine. Yeah, yeah. No overcraft and then smoke on the top. 
whatever mnemonic you remember that works for you is fine as long as you remember to do it right so i got my limb leads connected next thing i do is my precordial leads my chest leads right so i have them here get your electrodes by the way do electrodes do electrodes expire <laughs> yeah yeah so what so what's the problem with that so they expire the manufacturer gets more money the manufacturer gets more money yes but how does it impact me? <coughs> you gotta pay for it. The what? The Excellent, right? So what? What about the conductive job? It's job? not gonna grab Yeah. Gonna get Excellent. Yeah, yeah. It's not gonna. And, and the other thing, this is a little trick. What if your ambulance is? It's cold, right? Winter time, and your staff is in a cold ambulance. Do you think it's conducting well? No. No. So one one trick you can do is if you're in the hospital, you ever seen those uh, uh, machines that uh, they use for sonography, right? Ultrasound. You know what I'm talking about? They have, they have some gel, right? So if, you, if you're in the hospital and you happen to acquire some of the gel, <laughs> right, by asking for it, right? You could use that gel to kind of, like, if you have poor conduction on some of the leads, especially precordial leads, I take that gel and I put it on, my, uh, on, on these. When I would do uh, interfacility transport with a balloon pump, I would uh, definitely put some conductive gel into those because I wanted to make sure my balloon pump functions really well, right? So. Connect these, make sure they snap on, and do not do this like on the patient uh, chest. You notice I'm connecting them before connecting to him. And this was your ground. This was the green one that I said was the ground. All right. If your patient was diaphoretic, I would get like a... Um, Towel to wipe them off. So I'm just gonna raise your shirt. You can pull this up if you want. Oh, yeah. oh scandalous! <laughs> <laughs> so I clean it with alcohol because I want to make sure, right? First hour in weeks, you know. Give me your arm. And try not to put it over bony prominence. Give me this one for a second. You're getting too excited. <laughs> Look at her. So, guys, pay attention, right? So, we start, what I say, salt, pepper. Because right? this is a young guy that's getting naked in front of me, not an old guy. <laughs> salt, right? Then we do pepper. Ketchup. And then the relish, as I said, was on the precordial leads. This is your ground wire. Right? Uh, do not put it over the bones. You're going to get artery flex, Right? Also, if the patient's cold, he's going to be shivering. You're not going to be able to get good tracing. The next thing, you notice I'm not... Uh, Putting it based on what? On the diagram. I'm gonna go based on what? Based the landmark. So I found I find his manubrium and it corresponds to the second in the costal space. Right? I'm gonna go down third and then fourth. Fourth in the costal space. Do me a favor for now. I'll put, put one of your fingers here and here. So this is uh, locations of your V1, V2, right? Fourth in the costal space, right? To the left and right of the sternal border. And you want to palpate uh, if, uh, if your patient is very obese, it'll be a little bit harder to do it, right? Uh, if your patient is like very skinny or patient has COPD, you'll see a very good prominent uh, uh, intercostals, so it might be easier, right? So we cleanse the skin, right? We told the patient what we're going to do, so we're going to start with V1. Now move your finger. Then, so V1 goes first, V2 goes next. <clears throat> the next lead that I take is V4. So V4 is going to go below the nipple, uh, the left nipple. What's the line mark? Fifth in, fifth in the costal midclavicular. So fifth in the costal midclavicular. So V4 goes next. What's the next lead I put? V6. Where does it go? 
Mid auxiliary, fifth in the gospel space. So I'm, you know, you know, you know how these pictures make you like a curve. Mm -hmm. I don't want a curve. I want a straight lines. I want straight lines. So if I draw a line, straight line, straight line, straight line. That's what I want. Fifth and costal pace, straight line. Next lead you're gonna put is V3. V3 goes in between these two. And the next lead you're gonna put is what? V5. My V6 snapped off. So what I would do is I would not place it on him like this. Right, good. Uh, another thing, if you are not getting a reading, you forgot to connect these. <laughs> you see how they snap on? This is now everything is connected, right? You could ask your patient his age. So, sir, how old are you? Twenty-seven. Twenty-seven. All right. I'm gonna do something that I would not do on a normal person. Uh, I would put this on your lap for now, just to show you guys the buttons, right? On a patient, I would do it on here, but. <coughs> Uh, put your put one hand here. <laughs> All right. So look, the, so what I'm gonna go on this monitor, right? I'm gonna click uh, 12 lead, and what I wanna see is I wanna see all of them come up on the screen, and I'm gonna wait until I don't I, my 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 waveforms are good, my baseline is good. Everybody see that? So I'll read this run. I'll ask you, sir, how old are you? 27. 27, right? And the reason why I need this is for the algorithm. So I will click here, start acquire. And then it's going to ask me the age. I'm going to put 27. Check. Male, check. Right? And uh, at this portion is where you want to have them, right, not to move, right, as it's acquiring. By the way, if a patient was having chest pain or you believe there was ACS, the moment I get a 12 lead, should I just take everything off? No. What should I do? For how long? All the way to the hospital. All the way to the hospital. You want to get serial 12 leads. You want to get one at, at one contact, one during transport, right, and one right before you roll them in. Because he may not have ST segment elevations. The moment you roll through the door, right, all of a sudden you, your EKG changed, dynamic EKG, right? For New York City region, if you're working in New York City, if your EKG says STEMI and you determine there's a STEMI, you must call medical control before you transport. Anybody know why it is important? If you don't do it, you're going to be restricted. That we we absolutely gonna take him to the cath lab regardless. But why do we, in New York City only? We gotta take him. We gotta call online medical control. So let's take. I take this out. He has elevations two three AVF. It says STEM. <laughs> right? Can I, and I know my I have a hospital across the street. I know they have a cath lab capable facility. I'm gonna go. Why should I call anybody? So so good. The reason you call uh, online medical control and you're going to transmit the CKG to them is that they're going to call the, the facility. They're going to say it's the cardiologist that's doing the procedure there. If it's there, they're going to say, all right, take them to this facility. Sometimes the doctor may be there only on weekends. Or maybe Monday to Friday, five to six, right? So you have a time frame where the doctor is not there. Or they are overbooked. They have a lot of patients that have cases because uh, uh, cath lab is not only for patients who have a STEMI. It's only also for patients who have routine PCI percutaneous coronary intervention, right? So call them up, they'll tell you which hospital to go, and then you can initiate transport. Everybody follow? Yep. Do, if, what happens if you initiate transport without calling? Yeah. Very good, all right. All right. it's clear? All right. Okay. all right, so the machine is gonna give you your own interpretation. You do not, you're not having a STEMI, sir? Right. <laughs> so it will tell you the interpretation. You'll get a printout. If the printout still has some waveform, like it's not uh, clear cut, the baseline is not good, I would do another one. Right? Just say don't move, maybe make him more comfortable, right? I'll put some more padding so he's uh, sitting there relaxing. Any questions about how to apply it? Right? So we did, this is a standard 12 lead, right? I don't have to relabel this one. Now let's do the 15 lead, right? Let it go. The 15 lead, you're gonna have to relabel. And so what I'm gonna do is this. I'm gonna take uh, my leads. The first thing I gotta do is I'm gonna take V4. Right? Where am, I, where am I placing it? Hmm? Good. Right, so same thing with the skin prep, right? And then I take my 
V5 and I take my V6, where are these are going to go? In the back, right? Can you grab the rails and like scooch up a little bit? That's good. That's, that's good. Oh, you guys will not be able to see. I'm going to sit on the stretcher. Sit on the stretcher. No, no, sit, 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 sit. I'm going to turn. All right, scooch up now. Good. Do, do me a favor, take this arm, take this arm, and then move it on to your back like this. No, no, like towards your back. Good, perfect, stay like this. I'm gonna find, I'm gonna find his scapula, right? I'm gonna find his scapula, I'm gonna keep these lines, right? On the fifth and the costal space, so, and this is his spinal. So, the scapula line is gonna be V8 and this is gonna be V9. So, I prep the skin. And when am my, when am I doing the 15 lead? At what uh, conditions? When should I do this? When I believe there is what? Very good. All right, sir. Can you lay back? Perfect. Same thing, right? We're gonna do new uh, twelve lead, but. Starts again. I'm looking at the baseline, right? There's a very crucial aspect that's going to come now. What is very important to do? Right, we label it. Yeah. So, sir, please don't move. We're going to do another cardiogram. The moment it comes out, you must relabel it. You don't relabel it, you're going to forget to do it. So it's going to come out. Uh, it, it's going to, the interpretation, if they were elevated, is going to tell you erroneous, right? Because now we know we applied it at different locations. <clears throat> so the moment it comes out, all I'm going to do is here. I'm going to relabel V4. It becomes V4R. Are you able to see? So V4R. This becomes V8, this becomes V9. Okay? Yeah. And so, what I basically did to show you here, right? V4R, I write like this V8, V9. And this EKG, I'm going to add it to my other one so that when I go to the cath lab, right, I'll say, hey, doc, he had two, three AVF elevations, right? In addition to, he had right ventricular involvement. On the 15 lead EKG, this is our subsequent 15 lead EKG, and they're relabeled, right? So this is what I would do for for my transport, right? Because I know he has right ventricular involvement, right? I, I, I'm not going to do serial 15 lead EKGs. I'll probably move those to the front, back to where they were. I will do definitely serial 12 lead EKGs. Everybody follow? Uh, if uh, you believe he's high-risk patient, you could also do pads on him, defibrillation pads, in case you need to cardiovert or you need to uh, defibrillate him. Especially if he has frequent PVCs, right? Because he may go into R&T phenomenon. We talked about that. Uh, what else? So, uh, serial 12 leads. Uh, what, do not be one of those medics who you arrive to the hospital and you're like, all right, partner, we're, we're right there, right? All right, no problem. Now, move the pen for me, sir. All right, perfect. We're gonna walk. To, we're gonna walk you in. All right. All right. All right, first, leave this in an angle, let's, let's go, right? And you just take it off. Don't, don't be one of those pe people. Definitely, what you want to do is you arrive on the scene, you run another 12 lead when the ambulance is parked. You got the 12 lead, then you walk into the ER. Hopefully, your patient is on the stretcher with a monitor attached. So you come in, you give your report, you give your 12 leads. If you were going to go straight to the cath lab, you should, you should at least uh, create a concise report. I got a 65-year-old male with past medical history, hypertension, CAD, presents with one hour duration of chest pain, right? Upon assessment, patient shows elevations 2-3 AVF and clear wall MI with right ventricular involvement. This is the EKG. Patients received aspirin, nitroglycerin, right? Or did not get nitroglycerin because of this. So you called medical control. Uh, IVX is established, right? We have KVO fluids and his allergies is blah, 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 right? So make sure you inform the receiving, what you give, what you did not give, and your reasoning why. Give them the, the 12 lead so they have it, right? 
Any questions? Clear? All right. Keep it stuff.